Activision presents a smashing blast from the past. Developed by Vicarious Visions. It's Crash Bandicoot! Okay, everybody, so, welcome to the Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy, a remake of the original three Crash Bandicoots. It's, it's Crash Bandicoot! Alright. So, let's get to this. And immediately get stopped by a cutscene, but hey! But, Dr. Cortex... We haven't determined the cause of past failures! <laughs> Moron! This bandicoot will be my general, and he will lead my Cortex Commandos to world domination! This time, I shall reign triumphant! <laughs> we are closer than ever before! Quickly, into the vortex! <laughs> Dr. Cortex! <laughs> the Vortex is not ready! We have no idea what it could do! <laughs> Failure again! Ah, here's a problem! <laughs> Capture him! Uh-oh! <laughs> Prepare the female bandicoot. Okay, so that was our introduction plot. Uh, I miss the days when games were this simple. <laughs> anyway, Gameplay in Crash Bandicoot is actually fairly simple. You can run, you can jump, you can spin, and that's about it. The later games give you a few more different play styles, but that's pretty much all you do. So, yeah, and the objective of the game basically is to break boxes. There's the hotkeys for those who are curious. This is Aku Aku. He's basically your extra hits in this game. Instead of mushrooms or rings or anything like that, you get a mask. And that gives you an extra hit point, and if you collect three of them, you can become invincible. But, yeah, Crash Bandicoot is actually fairly simple as far as the old school action platformers go. It's just really hard platforming. It doesn't really have any major tricks up there. At least, for the first game. The later games have a lot more going for them, and... It's nice to see this, this series of games remade nowadays, because... For a while, I thought they were just sort of going to be abandoned, since the newer games in the series were anywhere from experimental to not very good. But I admire the attempts, don't get me wrong. Ooh. But overall, I really am glad to see the series go back. Now, this is the box-breaking tally, and wait a minute. Did I miss a few boxes back here? Yes, I did! Okay, so... So what I basically did there was I just got a gem. Um, you collect a gem for beating the stage 100% by breaking every box and not dying once. Now, in the, in the Insane Trilogy, you can beat the stage even if you die and still get the gem. In the original game, you had to beat the gem without dying. So basically... If I was playing the original Crash Bandicoot on PlayStation 1, that wouldn't have worked if I had died. But because I'm playing the Insane Trilogy, they're a little bit more forgiving there. But overall, I still think the Insane Trilogy is a great game in the series. It's definitely worth playing. And if you haven't bought it yet, God damn it, buy this game and support it, because it's really freaking good. This is honestly how I feel remakes should be made. Because it does everything the original game did, improves upon a lot of the flaws that existed. It just makes the game more fun to play, in my opinion. 
Okay, so what I just got there, that is a bonus token. There are three different types of them, and there are three hidden in every stage. If you collect all three, you'll be taken to a bonus round where you can break some boxes, get some extra collectibles, and so on and so forth. This right here is the gem platform. Uh, later on in the game, there will be special colored gems you can collect, and those colored gems will activate platforms in, in like, stages that will allow you to... Ah, I just got hit. That will allow you to come back later, basically, and get more stuff. Uh, that was badly timed, okay. So I just got hit twice there, so now I've got to be a bit more careful, because I don't have an Aku Aku mask, which means I could easily die, because I was being careless, and one thing you really want to not do in Crash Bandicoot is be careless, because this game can very easily kill you if you're not paying attention. Anyway, here is the bonus game. It's basically a 2D platformer type romp. You just platform, you break boxes, and that's it. And that right there was Tana Bandicoot, the character that we're supposed to be saving who's been captured by Cortex. Anyone? So yeah, there's not really that much else I need to explain at this point. This is pretty much how Crash Bandicoot operates. It's fairly simple but challenging platforming that's really fun. As you can see here, I missed three boxes. The three boxes in this stage are blocked by the crystal platform, so I can't finish the stage 100% on my first try. But I'll have to come back later to get those. That's no problem, though. The game itself is fairly good about that. There are some stages where you have to backtrack later when you get a special color gem. Some stages you can beat on your first try, but it's just it's just a fun game to play overall. Alright, the Great Gate. Now, as far as I'm concerned, um, that should be pretty much it for the controls. I shouldn't really have to explain much else, because that's pretty much all you have to work with in this first game, anyway. Um... So I guess for the talk about Crash Bandicoot, um, the original Crash Bandicoot was released on PSX, or PlayStation, whatever you want to call it, and it was a fairly solid platformer that was kind of used to entice people into getting the PlayStation, and I really enjoyed it. This was one of my favorite games to play on the original PlayStation when it first came out, along with Spyro, which I'm really excited for the Ignited Trilogy as well. Like, remakes of old games seem to be catching on a lot more nowadays, and I can definitely see why, because they're all solid. At least most of them. And I really love seeing remakes like this, where they nail everything, because... This, in my opinion, is just a really good remake. It does everything it, like the original did, only it improves upon it in a lot of areas. One thing I have seen people complain about this version, though, is... Uh, Crash Bandicoot's jumping is a little bit different. He flips and falls much faster in this version than he has in other versions which can make jumps a little bit tighter than they were in the original, because in the original game, Crash Bandicoot hanged in the air like he was a puppet on strings, so you had a lot more air time, which made some jumps a lot easier and made some stages a lot easier. But the controls are also a lot more clunky, so your mileage may vary there, because there were some stages that were made infinitely harder by the awkward controls. We won't talk about that too much right now, just know that for the time being, I really do like the controls in this game. I think that they handle really well. I guess what I really should talk about overall is the boxes, because I haven't really been talking about those too much, and they're kind of the main focus of the game. Um, most of the boxes, the objective is to basically break all the boxes and get to the end of the stage. Each box has a various different, like, has things that are different about them. So, regular boxes, they can contain Wumper Fruit, they can contain random stuff. Question mark boxes can contain anything from a bunch of Wampa fruit to to extra lives to tokens and stuff. Excla like arrow boxes, you can jump on them and they'll give you an extra spring. TNT boxes, if you spin into them, you take damage. You have to blow them up by jumping on them. And the boxes with the see-through sides, you can see through them and see Wampa fruit. You have to jump on those like five times to break them properly. Overall, though, I really do like the design of the game. Each box is distinct enough so you can easily tell them apart. So there's nothing... It doesn't really have any confusing moments where you break a box and don't get what you expect. Anyway, boulders. So this is the first stage with 
A chase mechanic crashed into the last wow. couple of these. Wow. For the first stage, it's the most simple of the bunch. You just get chased by a boulder. Try to avoid getting crushed by it. Oh, that's not good. I hit that fence. Uh, I think the first two are forgiving enough, though, that I should be able to make it. Yeah, okay. So, if I hadn't been that- if I hadn't been more careful there, I could have easily gotten killed by that, so... You gotta really pay attention in these sections, because you can easily die. The boulder is actually faster than it looks. It can actually really easily catch you. What you want to be doing mostly is trying to keep going- try to keep going as straight as possible. Because if you start jagging around a little too much, you're gonna slow down enough for the boulder to catch you. So there, I just did that, and there's the gem. Not half bad at all, there's another perfect level. And also, I think I should comment that apparently Crash Bandicoot keeps these things up as what this but That's a little vulgar, so let's just move on. He also keeps them in his ears and in his stomach! But anyway... Moving on to the next level, upstream. Okay. What have we got? Uh, in my opinion, this is the first stage in the game that's a little bit of a step up in difficulty from the others. The rest of them are just kind of generic stages and the boulder stage was a little bit more of a challenge mission where you have an uncontrollable thing that you just have to run and roll with. This is the first increased difficulty platforming level. Overall, Crash Bandicoot is fairly fair with its difficulty, I find. Oh, I totally didn't see that guy. But I guess I spun him into the TNT, so I guess it kind of works. But. Yeah, Crash Bandicoot's main challenge is it gives you a stage like this. This is the first of the two water stages in this style, the riverbed stages. Crash Bandicoot's general gimmick is it'll give you a stage of a type, and then later on down the road it'll give you a harder variation of the same stage. So, it expects you to learn the mechanics of the stage, and then you have to play a harder one later on to see if you remember all the mechanics in it. So you can see right there, there's more crystal platforms. That means I'll have to return later when I get a colored crystal to see more of the stage. Get all the boxes and all that. I mean, you can still try to break all the boxes on your first try, but I'm pretty sure every stage that has one of those, you can't get all of them until you visit, revisit with a colored gem. Which, I've been collecting gems throughout the game. Certain stages have special colored gems that you have to grab. They will make platforms for you to use later on. boxes. So, I don't know if I need the, the gem to get all the boxes in the stage. There might just be three down the road. Oh, uh, nope. There's the end. So the three boxes are probably past this point or back near the near the waterfall. Yeah. Oh, well. I'll have to come back later when I get the color gem. And we made it to our first boss fight, which I can probably beat in the time limit that I got. So, this is Papu Papu. Um, for the first boss, I honestly think Papu Papu is a little too easy, to be honest with you. He was actually harder in the PlayStation version, if you can believe that. In this version, he has two extra hits, but you basically just do that. Like, all you do is jump on him, and he'll repeat the staff switch, swing. And that's all he does. Like, in the PlayStation version, after you hit him, he would automatically start spinning after he recovered. So, you could potentially get hit if you weren't paying attention. But in this version, I don't think, as long as you don't stand in front of him, you will basically never get hit. So, 
Yeah, that was a thing. The boss fights in Crash Bandicoot can range. Some of them are really hard, and others are stupid easy. But, yeah, anyway, this also unlocks Coco's Time Machine, which you can enter. And Coco Bandicoot can join your journey. This was a character who was introduced in Crash 2, and didn't become playable until the Wrath of Cortex on GameCube, I believe. She was in Crash 3, and she was playable in certain vehicle sections, but she wasn't a playable character in the regular stages until then. But anyway, that's going to call it for this first episode. I have a previous save there. But for now, I'm going to call this episode for now. So that was Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy. And I'll see you guys in the next episode. See y'all later. Cortex is a genius, a mental aberration. He's totally fixated on well domination. The local <laughs> island creatures are dull and obtuse. Until the evil doctor turns on his juice, he wants them for his troops. They come out income hopes, most especially Crash. Crash Bandicoot should have been a genius, but he doesn't quite compute. Crash! Crash Bandicoot! Everything can happen now that Crash is in pursuit. Tom has been selected for running through the blender. Crash will fight to save her. He'll never surrender. He'll vanquish any villain to set his girlfriend free. He doesn't have a clue about how to proceed. His heart's in the right place. His brain's been rearranged.